Look at that. I, I saw myself appear on the monitor. How, how amazing is that? How amazing is it to actually be here tonight on another Wednesday? Welcome to another edition of Grassroots Motorsports Live presented by CRC Industries, everybody. I am JG Pastor Jack. We got a great show for you guys tonight. If you were with us a couple weeks ago, you remember we talked a lot about personal safety gear, helmets, suits, socks, gloves, underwear, all that stuff. Tonight, it is all about the safety gear in the car. Bob Kikasik from Stable Energy is going to be with us in just a few minutes to get everybody on track. We are going into the racing season. We want everybody on track safely and in the best possible position to go fast and to not be crumpled up into a tiny little ball. Our, our live studio audience is, is figuring out how, they, how to turn their phones off back there. We actually have some <laughs> special guests that we'll introduce you to later in the show. Very excited to have some folks stop by because this is Rolex week, everybody. We are getting ready for the Rolex 24 at Daytona. We got the Grassroots Motorsports Experience tent set up out there. I cannot wait to see so many of you out there. I have a stack. Oh, look at this. I have a stack. You are, you need to get ready for a veritable shower of gold this weekend. These golden tickets can be yours. You, look at this. I got, I got passes uh, that might get you in the hot pits to see an actual pit stop that might get you in the right seat of a car hot lapping Daytona. Come by, hang out at the booth. If you've got a GRM experience ticket, you might get tapped on the shoulder, uh, either pulled into my van or taken for a VIP experience at Daytona. One of those two things. Can't say which just yet, but cross your fingers. Also, <laughs> if you're coming to Daytona this weekend, go to your phones, text Rolex, R-O-L-E-X to 31996. We will send you updates on schedule and cool stuff going on throughout the weekend. Nothing weird, nothing creepy, no solicitations, just basically, hey, there's a tour going on. Hey, there's somebody's giving a talk at the booth. Hey, we uh, donuts. Uh, we, 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 there's donuts, there's fresh donuts. Cool stuff, we will let you know what's going on. I see a lot of our regulars here. If you are watching us on Facebook, I, I got you over here. If you're watching us on YouTube, I see a nice crowd forming on YouTube. Say something and let us know you're there. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on Facebook, of course, uh, like our, our page, like the broadcast, all that social media juice really, really helps us keep doing these shows. And also give a little shout out to our friends down here in the lower left-hand corner. Of course, our friends from CRC Industries, all your automotive chemicals. If you are going to the store, baby, if you are buying automotive chemicals, you're grabbing that CRC stuff, you're getting a great product, you're helping out the community a little bit by supporting a company that supports amateur motorsports and uh, motorsports at every level. Also, our friends at Autobooks, Aerobooks in Burbank, autobooks-aerobooks.com on the web. But if you're out in Southern California, it is worth the trip to Burbank there to check out what is going on there. Great live events every week, cruise-ins, cars and coffees, and tens of thousands of amazing books, magazines, DVDs, the entire history of the automobile right there. All right, let's uh, let's get rolling because we got a lot of ground to cover and I see uh, Joe's on from Morris, Illinois. Um, I, I am wearing shorts tonight. I, that is not in mockery of you, Joe. I, I know you guys are suffering through, through some weather up there, but uh, it is beautiful down here in Florida. Glad you could join us on the web. Let's get to the show. Let's bring on Bob Kikasik from Stable Energies. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks welcome for down having Over me. Beach. Um, all right, so let's, let's set the scene here a little bit. Sure. Um, over, over the last few months, we found, uh, came across this Volkswagen Fox. It's, it's been a race car for a while. It, yeah. you know, it, it may be, maybe it's even got some, some pro race history to it. We don't know. It's just that exciting. But mm -hmm. we've been sort of undoing some things that have been done to it, getting it ready for the 2019 season, getting it safe. You guys have been a, been a huge help in, in that. Let's start a little further back than that even. Tell us who is Stable Energies, what do you guys do? Tell us a little bit about the company, and then I want to talk to you about how to be safe on track because it's, it's a scary place out there. Well, Stable Energies is a uh, motorsport uh, safety equipment and parts supplier. Uh, we've become distributors for many of the top brands in the country. Uh, we also have a shop, so we have experience with installing all the parts that we sell. That's where we can give the customers best advice. Um, doing proper installations and choosing the right equipment. Yeah, and as well. Yeah, it, it seems having been around the racing community for a while, 
I think everybody who's, who's involved in motorsports knows the nuts and bolts. They, they, they know the pieces. But I think when it comes to safety, I'm guessing that things can break down between the, the manufacturer or the distributor and the final installer. Because sure. you, you've got, you, you've got the, uh, all the safety gear is held to a very, very specific standard mm -hmm. by just a few organizations. But you've got tens of thousands of different people out there installing the stuff. So this is kind of a kind of an even big question to start with, but how do you guys minimize that? You're, you're going to sell 50 roll cages that are all the same. They're going to be put in by 75 different people. How how do you you, you minimize the the installer error for stuff like this? Well, usually a lot of the parts come with instructions for proper <laughs> installations, but who reads those, right? Yeah. Um, we like to gu give guidance, you know, to the uh, the installer, whether it's a do-it-yourselfer or shops who are doing something for the first time, do an installation, um, you know, and we're, you know, we're really uh, particular yeah. about that. You know, if it's if it's not installed right, it's not safe, and the equipment's not going to work properly if it's not installed right. And and it, this is not so, the, the the crazy thing about safety gear is this is all stuff that we hope we never ever ever need. To, to, to work to, to, its, yep. to its full potential. Um, and it's stuff we're gonna spend real money on and it's gonna be some of the more expensive pieces in the, in the car. But we're kind of hoping we never actually need some of this stuff. Um, so it, it, it needs to be done right to begin with. All right, let's, let's start with some pieces. And actually, uh, sure. let me, let me uh, give a shout out to our friend Dinesh, uh, who noticed that there are a set of intercomp scales under the car, that is right, uh, towards the end of the show. You'll be able to guess the weight of this here automobile in a little segment we call What's It Weigh, presented by Intercomp. We are going to drop this, uh, drop the fox down onto the scales. Whoever comes closest without going over to the actual weight is going to win fabulous prizes from the GRM prize stash. And, uh, you know, it's a gutted VW Fox with a two liter Jetta motor in it and a roll cage and a race seat and very very little else so <laughs> use use that to, to to guide your guesses don't don't start throwing a bunch of guesses up there yet we'll do the official guessing towards the end of the show but uh just be be mulling that over in how much fuel in, it, in your brain how much fuel in it uh jesse how much fuel is in is in the fox maybe no one <clears throat> knows maybe half a tank we don't <laughs> even know how big the tank is though we are we are th throwing a lot of wild cards at you guys tonight so maybe half a tank um, but who, who, how big is that tank? We don't know. All right, let, let's, let's start inside. I, I, sure. I, 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 I think we, I think race seats are something we, we don't talk about enough because I think it's one of the, the, the primary safety features of a car. And I think people confuse the safety and comfort aspects of, of, of seats and, and they don't give, give either enough credence sometimes. So what, what are the, 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 the actual safety features on a seat? How, how is this design different from, from, from a normal seat to provide safety rather than just the, the physical well, support? Well, a seat with a, uh, with a head restraint gives you more lateral support right. you know, for your head. You know, and uh, also having a head and neck restraint, uh, there's different types of those as well. Um, but one of the important things to do or uh, to look for in uh, fitting a seat so first it's got to fit, right? and then it's going to work. So the, uh, the shoulder harness openings, they have to be, your shoulders have to be within the opening. If your, your upper torso is too low, then your shoulder's going to be here, then the belt going over your shoulder is going to be supported by the, by the, uh, the back of the seat, okay. which it's not designed to do. So short people, not good for this seat, so you have to choose a proper seat. Uh, we have in our store, we have uh, 20 seats lined up. So when people are local to us, you can come in and sit in each seat, hip width, as tight as possible, comfortable. And this is most important. A lot of uh, seats that are being used are not, are, are not fitted proper, correctly. properly vertically. Yeah. So and I, I think likewise, you don't want to be above those. But if you're above those, you've got bigger problems. Yeah, at that point. yeah. You're not These particular seats happen to have harness holes that are pretty high. Okay. Uh, there are other seats, uh, some of the Recaro seats, some of the holes are low, and 
people would cover them up with their shoulders, like you say. So <clears throat> if, if you're telling me fitting is important, if mm -hmm. we're talking about an enduro car like this, that we're going to have several people in, we might have different sized people in there. Sure. Some of those people may have seat inserts that they're using or padding that mm -hmm. they're adding. At what point, if you're, if you're talking about maybe moving somebody's butt up a little bit or moving their back closer or shifting their, their hips around, how, how much leeway do you really have with padding? Like if you move somebody up so high that this is no longer yeah. containing their hips, mm -hmm. you've defeated the purpose. So if you're talking about adding padding to an enduro seat, how much padding can you safely add to it to a seat? Well, as you said, if, you're, if your hips are get, starting to get above the side of the seats, certainly not going to hold you in place. Um, the seat cushions come off. So usually when you're going to do an insert, you know, for different drivers, you pull the cushions out and each driver will have their own insert. Some people use two pads. That might be just enough to get you in the right position uh, for comfort as well. And also, if, you, if you're talking about you know, a, a team that had, that's got little guys and big guys, is there, is there a starting point? Do you basically take the biggest person on, on the team and they have the, the, the seat with the least amount of accessories and then you bolster it for everybody else? Or, yeah, I mean, well, if you have to fit the biggest guy first. Yeah. Uh, we had a car once, uh, an M3, that uh, we fit. There's a guy six foot six, and a guy about five ten, and another guy about uh, five six. Oh wow! Very difficult. We had it on sliders. We had uh, seat back brace pinned, and uh, we had to use two different sub straps. So it's difficult to fit a wide range of drivers. So talk to me about sliders <clears throat> a little bit. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about a seat that's on on a sliding mount. First, if you have a carbon seat or any, any composite seat, you don't necessarily need to brace the back of the seat. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so you, yeah. so you actually can slide the bottom. Mm -hmm. Is there one slider design that's better than, than another? Is there anything to avoid there? Because it seems like there is. there's a lot of hardware there. That, yeah. There's a lot of chances to get something wrong. There. Well, first of all, it's got to be a dual locking slider. So it's got to have latches on both rails. Uh, there are FIA homologated sliders, and there are non-FIA sliders. The safest and strongest ones are the ones that are homologated by FIA. Okay. Um, they're bigger, they're, they're a little bit bulkier, they have more bracing in them, but they're also safer. So actually that, that's a great segue. I got a great yeah. question from, from Brian here that, that he's, he's someone that rents a lot of rides and especially mm -hmm. in, in we're talking about Champ Car, we're talking about Lemons. Sure. A lot of arrive and drive people out there. You show up to a track, I'm gonna, I, the <laughs> first time I've ever, ever seen the car, any kind of dead giveaways, especially on a, on a seat mount, as to, as to did, did I throw my money away? Do sure. I need to get back on yeah. the plane and go home? The first thing I do when I get up to a car, I'll, I'll take the, you know, the seat by the head restraint or the shoulder wing and just rock it and see if it's going to shake on the sliders. And that's a real good indication okay. whether you should run or, or stay. Let's, uh, hey, Jesse, where did that old, oh, here it is. <clears throat> So n not to, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. I saw so that even before. Apart. Yeah, not to. We we were undoing a few things that that were were done on this car. This was actually used for the seat mount before. I mean, can you? Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, what's What's bad about this? As a as a as a seat mounting piece of hardware. I, first of all, I don't even know what the host uh, pack is doing. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, was it, where, where's it was the same material. Okay, is, is the seat mount oh. thing still well, over they here? had extra material around. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. It's still on the old seat. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this was... Yeah, that's scary. This was being yeah. used to both the seats. So, what, what, what's gone wrong here? Well, somebody wasn't thinking, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And we've had seats where they've, they've had long bolts with nuts stacked up on them for spacers and... And you know this kind of thing is just uh, just not acceptable. So what's our minimum hardware requirement? That you uh, well, uh, eight millimeter bolts for most of the seats. Okay. Um, and four bolts, one in each corner, and also for mounting, if you're going to mount directly to the floor, you should have backing plates under, because you're mounting to a thin floor pan. So you have to have a good amount of surface area to prevent the seat from pulling up through. So little washers don't do it. So in a grade eight or a grade ten point nine, yeah, I think for um, yeah, grade eight is uh, certainly more than adequate. I, I would think universally, eight point eight metric, metric. Yeah, yeah, universally across across all safety stuff, stay away from the grade five stuff. Oh yeah, I, I would yeah, think for sure. Um, okay, let's, let's see if I uh, 
I missed something here. Yes, Tom says that VW Fox is awesome, but uh, he he is biased. Oh uh, yeah, Tim Tim wanted to see the see oh, no, the, the seat, seat mount again. Um, <laughs> the, I, I don't know why. Yeah, you wanted to see this because this is this is just friggin' terrifying. But yeah, that that is this is the material. This is um, a Unistrut material from from Lowe's that was used to, to mount mount the old seat, and and that is that is now gone. Um, okay, so let's let's get into to what what you're you're, you're attaching yourself into the seat with. Now we, we talked to okay. talked to our friend from uh, Race Grip a couple weeks ago about, about harnesses a little bit, but we can never really say enough about harnesses. We got some some brand new Schroth harnesses here. When we're when we're mounting harnesses, this is something that that we Jesse and I talked quite a bit about on on, on Monday. One of the important things that I think you, you can't tell people enough is to spread that load as much as you can. And the, the floor of a car is fairly thin. I mean, mm -hmm. the floor of a car is only stiff because there's there's ridges and there's and there's bumps and there's stuff in there, Correct. but it is thin material. So the more you can spread the load, the better. And um, we'll open this up. Um, this is, so the, the staple on this has just blown my mind all of a sudden. That's a good German staple. Yeah. These are the spreader plates that come with it. Backing plates. Yeah, but you're you're saying that even something bigger than that, if you can get away with well, it, well, for a for a seat, flat, yeah, okay. for a seat, for harnesses, this is the recommended surface area. Okay, as a backing plate. And yeah. what is mm -hmm. is there a common mistake? Like, can you just can you just go to the hardware store and get some big fender washers? Is that acceptable, or is that something you yeah. want to stay away well, from? Certainly not acceptable. The, if, the surface area would be too small. Yeah. Uh, also, the thickness, you know, is critical. So, if I have to improvise something, I, I, I lost these. I'm moving a harness. What, what's what's some the best flat thing? stock? You know, drill through it and put a nut, and or you have the eye bolts if you're using. Okay. Or if you're bolting solid, then you'd use a bolt and stick with yep. something. This is like what, probably about four square inches. So go. Uh, yeah. So what is what is the spread? If, if we're talking about some of the rules of some of these <coughs> these, these different series. Mm -hmm. What do you guys see out there now, as far as are are the are the more budget friendly series uh, lemons and champ car? They're starting to to raise their game a little bit as far as safety. They're requiring fire systems now. Sure. They're requiring proper head and neck. No no more donuts. Mm -hmm. um, are we are we kind of coming into a, a more universal? Time when when safety across the board is 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 fairly consistent, or yeah. are, are there are there some? And you can call out series by name if you want. That's up to you. But you know, are there are, are is anybody lagging behind out there that you see right now? Uh, well, you, there are some some series. I think Lemons is one of them. That and they're getting better because now they're requiring more safety equipment. Are they requiring uh, fire systems? I, I think Champ Car just went to. Is, yeah, I'm not not sure. And, and I know they're talking as about as it this year as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know that's a good thing. Um, AER, uh, they finally required onboard fire systems now. Okay. Um, most of the uh, most of the racing groups are now. They're 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 all coming on board. You know, it's 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 safety. You know. Awesome. And we'll 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 yeah. talk about sure. about fire systems in in a minute too. Mm -hmm. I, I want to finish up on a harness. We have a good question oh, yeah. from yeah. Uh, from from Facebook. Uh, backing plates here obviously go under the car, so there's there's no pull through. Mm -hmm. Plates on top as well. No, good, good idea, or not 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 necessary. No need them. No. So because your, all your force is coming, it's pulling coming from yeah. the other way. Yeah. Sure. If you if if you have that force pushing down, something yeah. far far yeah. wronger you're has going happened. The, you're going the wrong you have, way. You yeah. have other you have <laughs> other problems. Um, so what are we looking at in a a good harness? The the, the first thing I, I see when I look at this one. Is it's got adjust, adjustable substraps, which is really really nice, especially if you're getting mm -hmm. getting various drivers and they're nice pull up on on the substraps to, to to quick adjust them. So these are some of the more higher end belts, yeah. and these are these are called flexi flexi belts, and you do get the adjusters on the, the substraps. Uh, the other thing you get is the ability to make these either pull up or pull down on the lap belts. Oh, very cool. So these are pulled down right now. So if you take them apart, you can remove the ends and swap the ends around. 
So then it can become pull up. So if I was maybe driving a formula car where there was really no access around my hips. It depends. That, yeah. that might be somewhere you want to use a pull up belt. Yeah. Or if you have a really, really deep seat and a harness is mounted down really low. Deep seats are, are the most uh, critical for pull down. Because what happens is if the buckle you know, on your abdomen and, you're, and the adjusters are here and you're trying to pull out, you wind up pulling up because you're deep in the seat and then it won't pull anymore. That's why we gave you the Enduro belts or for the, uh, for the Fox. Okay. Because what, the difference in those, and I, it's, they're in the car, but the, uh, the adjusters, these adjusters here are right up at the buckle. Okay. Or the cam lock. So now you're pulling right from here, not from a ways down the belt. So that you know, gives you a, a much better pull. So we had a question about, about proper angle of, mm -hmm. uh, of these belts, and I, I know that's, <clears throat> that's, that's important for the rules, but the, the, rooted in the fact that they're just safer when they're mounted at certain angles. What are we looking for in, in proper angle of the belts? We mentioned our, our shoulders there before. Right. Well, start with from, the shoulder belts. Yeah, yeah. so from, from those to the attachment point, mm -hmm. what are some of the angles we're look, looking to achieve with these Well, the, win belts? the window you're looking for from the top of your shoulder is either zero degrees parallel with the ground or 20 degrees down. Okay. Uh, preferably a little bit down, uh, 10 to 15 degrees. What that does is puts a little bit of pressure on your shoulders to keep you more in place if you happen to get inverted. Right. Um, and if you're wearing a head and neck restraint, the pressure on the head and neck restraint is critical to the way it functions as well. So that's for the shoulder harnesses okay. to start with. Uh, as far as the other belts, the lap belts, uh, optimally a 60 degree angle is where the mounting point should be. From, and from little, your hips, from your hips through, yeah. the, through the right. seat mount. Through the basically. seat mount, 60 degrees, and slightly inward. Okay. So it's sort of a little bit of a wraparound. Uh, Substraps, typically about 20 degrees below your crotch, uh, behind your crotch. And, yeah. and straight down and then. Yeah, and one thing work. we learned from our, yeah. our friends at RaceQuip is, is the substraps, the, their function is just as important to locate that, that lap strap vertically as it is to keep you from submarining under. Exactly. Right? So, so how do we, how much tension do we want on, on, on that substrap? Where do we want to mount that, that lap strap? Is it just right directly across, across the hip? Well, usually about where your belt is going to be. Okay. So that's where the, uh, the cam lock should be. And then most all the harnesses now have two inch lap belts uh, to fit within that iliac crest. So that gives the strongest, that's the strongest part of your hips. Okay. So with it mounted there, you have a full load, you know, so. Um, and when I'm belted in the car, it, yeah. it sounds like a weird question, but yeah, I've, I've been belted in by other people and I've done it myself and it never feels the same, but how, how tight, how tight? Should, should, those, <laughs> should those belts be? As tight as you could stand it. Is, it, is, it, oh, is yeah. that really the, yeah. the answer? Yeah, and most guys, uh, you know, they'll have to tighten up after a while, you know, for moving around things kind of settle yeah. in and uh, yeah. So when you're driving down a straight, you know, can tighten up. So, and, sure. and is there anything you can do? Like if you, if you find your, your lap belt loosening up a little bit, as you keep tight, tighten those shoulder belts up, you feel your lap belt creeping up. Does that just mean your lap belt probably hasn't been installed properly or you should maybe do, no. do something where you can, that, you can access those poles a little easier? Well, that's a function of your substrap. Okay. So if you've got the substrap length correct, then that the, the uh, cam lock's not going to ride up. Okay, so 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 yeah. that that is totally locating exactly. that that yep. vertically. Awesome. And the sequence of tightening too is is lap belt first and then shoulder harnesses. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, this is a good good question to follow that up. When if you're uh, not really a problem that I have, but if you're if you're a very small person, kind of hard to get your your belts tight enough at at, at times. Is that is that does that mean your, your seat is probably fitting improperly? Does that mean your, your yeah. belts are Some, fitting something's improperly? Not, something's not correct. Okay. It doesn't matter your, it's your size. If the seat is correct for you and the harnesses are mounted in right points, it's going to be the same for, every, you know, for everybody else, tightness-wise. Uh, and <laughs> and to, to follow that up, uh, best, best seats for, for somebody bigger. Are, are you looking for a specific dimension? Like if, if somebody comes in shaped like 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 me or, or you know shaped shaped like the a, a, a normal American, what's the first dimension you're going to look at in in a seat to to try and get a, a bigger driver into a seat? Is it just well you know, hip width, hip width straight yeah, up. Yeah. yeah, there are some seats that are a little bit wider, um, but 
the harness holes are also taller. So you have to kind of be careful with that. And some seats are wide enough where they won't fit in some cars. Well, especially with the shoulder wings, the width of the shoulder wings. Yeah, well, hit the that's doors. Something, yeah. something we found, and especially cars with side airbags. And actually, a yeah. uh, good question from Jeff over here on, on YouTube. A lot of folks doing HPDE stuff, doing non-competitive stuff. They're, mm -hmm. they're, adding, they're adding roll bars to cars. Uh, they're, adding, they're adding race seats to cars. But these are maybe still cars that, that are street cars and may still have airbags in in the windows in in the steering wheel mm -hmm. um yeah I, I i know there's only certain things you can say liability wise you don't want to get too far but are there any considerations there if you're if you're adding some of this safety gear to to a car that already has oem supplemental restraints any any workarounds there any anything to to avoid or to 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 consider that's a tough one yeah <laughs> that, that's a tough one that, and that's you know a great question Jeff. liability Thank wise for, it's yeah. very difficult yeah. to say uh, it, is it is it best to, to I mean maybe this is a conversation for for not not ha having in public because I don't even know where I'm going with this but maybe is, is there something to be said for uh, be careful about defeating any any factory stuff. I was at a Corvette Club event a few weeks ago and talking to a guy that had a brand new ZR1. Mm -hmm. And he, we're at Roebling Road. I'm I'm going into turn one at Roebling Road like 140 miles an hour with a, a roll bar and a race seat and a, and a race wheel and a full harness. He and his brand new ZR1 is going into turn one 172 miles an hour with a three point belt on and uh, a lot of airbags yeah a yeah. lot of, a lot of airbags <laughs> yeah, um, and and hopefully help. good life insurance so um yeah i uh, jeb i w we don't know the answer to that and i and i i think i think that is a that's an answer that as we move forward in automotive technology um i i, I don't know where it's going cars are getting really really yeah. fast if you want to replace the steairing wheel you're losing the airbag yeah exactly yeah. And, and and that's not legal so um yeah b bigger question than, than than we can answer here um, give us some, give us some, some sizes for, for hip width and like what, what kind of inch measurements are, are, are we looking at? Like what's a, what's a standard seat width? Well, a, uh, standard seat width is about 16 inches. Okay. I would say hip width. And, uh, the larger ones are 17 or a little bit bigger. Yeah. Oh. There are some seats, uh, Recaro makes a seat that, that kind of bulges out in the hip area and has narrow shoulder wings. And yeah, okay. well, it's not head restraint. Okay. Uh, narrow shoulder wings, so it fits in lots of cars well, yeah. and tall holes. So okay. it fits for tall and, and wide people. Awesome. Okay, we're going to take uh, a quick break. I got to pay a couple bills here. Sure. Come back. We have a special guest on the other side of the break for just a minute. When we come back with you after that, Bob, I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the other stuff we, we bolted in here, sure. fire systems especially, and then some of the, the, the netting and some of the some of the okay. different different driver restraints. So uh, go uh, go go get comfortable. Um, take take a little break. I'm off. Back with with Bob in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, you you madam or sir out there. First off, thanks very much for watching. If you are coming to Daytona this weekend, I am very excited to see you. We have got uh, most of the tent set up out there. The big GRM compound. Very very excited to host everybody. If you are coming to the big show this weekend. You can text Rolex to 31996. You'll get updates on schedule stuff, on cool stuff we are doing there at the GRM compound, tours we are uh, having whenever there's fresh donuts at the Krispy Kreme display. We will let you guys know. Also, if you text GRM Live, GRM L I V E, to 31996, we'll send you show updates. I don't think we've actually done any of those yet, but uh, sometimes I pick one, one random viewer and just just start texting me pictures of, of, of uh, our ducks. It's, 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 it's really, really fun. So thank you very much for uh, doing that. Um, yeah, and Je Jeff is, uh, is thanking us for our, our delicate handling of, of, the, of the question about the supplementary restraints. Yeah, it, 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 to be honest, I don't know, man. That, that, is, that is such a, a big, terrifying question <laughs> that uh, I'm not even sure where to go with that. Before we go any further, folks, I want to tell you guys about the people that make this show possible. I'm talking, of course, about our friends from CRC Industries. They are back for another year. They are back for 2019. Uh, Brake Clean Pro Series, I'm seeing it in more and more places. It is awesome. What's Brake Clean Pro Series, you ask? 
Well, good sir or madam, it is brake clean in a bigger jar. It's like, it's brake clean that's already awesome. It's just more of it. What's better than brake clean? More brake clean. So I'm seeing that stuff at Harbor Freight now. Uh, I just saw some at Walmart, actually, so you can get that out there anywhere. Our whole, actually, our CRC shelf is getting a little bit, a little bit crusty because we are using this stuff all the time. There is a chemical for every use. If you are buying automotive chemicals and you're buying that CRC stuff, we appreciate it very much. You're getting a great product, but you are also giving a little bit back to this show. And you know, your grandmother sends you a basket of cookies for the holidays. You send her a nice note. Maybe, maybe you're killing some time one day. You go over to CRC's Facebook page. You drop them a little note that you appreciate them supporting the show. It means a lot to us. Doesn't doesn't really take much time to do, and that actually lets lets them know that they are having an impact and uh, they are spending their money wisely. Also, give a little shout out to our friends at Auto Books, Aero Books, world's greatest bookstore in Burbank, California. We have another video from our friends at Auto Books that we are going to show right now. Katie, take it away. Hi, Jerry DiCaprio here from Auto Books, Aero Books in beautiful downtown Burbank. And I'm here to tell you about a, a new release. It's called Stardust International Raceway, Motorsport Meets the Mob. See these guys, you know, in uh, Vegas, they said, hey, we got to drag some people out here to the desert, do some gambling, you know what I'm talking about? So they thought, hey, let's, uh, let's make a race, a raceway. We could have like cars and everything, you know? So uh, hilarity ensues when uh, these two uh, disparate groups meet each other. All right. Really good book, really entertaining. And you can buy it at autobooks-aerobooks.com. Look at that, I'm back with an amazing uh, uh, dual angle wipe. I have returned. We, I promised special guests, and ladies and gentlemen, I will deliver. Uh, we had some visitors just randomly stop by the shop today, say hi. So uh, it, is, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome uh, our buddy, Tom O'Gorman. Come on over and say hi. Hello there. Welcome to Ormond Beach, my Woo! friend. <laughs> Uh, so Tom, check it out. We're here. Yeah, I know. In this, this place uh, is incredible. It, it's it's not a, it's 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 nice. It's adequate. It's nice. It's it's it, it's very. It does the job well. Incredible is is uh, an adjective we reserve for handsome young professional race car drivers, <laughs> which is exactly what what, what this is. So, um, uh, if, for for those of you that don't know Tom O'Gorman, we first met Tom when he was just. Um, the the 19 year old kid going really really fast at the solar Probably nationals 16, yeah. 16 year old yeah. kid even good god yeah. <laughs> thanks for thanks for making me feel just a little bit older tom thank, thank but i have the same reaction god it's been a while <laughs> same reaction to how old i am thank <laughs> you. jesus christ uh you you have parlayed that skill of yours into a full-time professional r r race car gig that is that is a rare thing these days um how how and how and why how do you wake up every day and go this is pretty effing cool yeah okay. uh, every time i drive to an airport yeah every time i drive and see the peri uh, the peripheral of a racetrack come over the all of that time it's just like pinch me every time so it's it's been a blast um like you said started with autocross did that for seven years kind of saved enough money to try road racing and thought why well, either now or never so gave that a little shot um did a year of club racing with scca found out you could Pro race a B spec car in the same spec you when you race it in club racing. Yeah. A couple of years ago, bought that, kind of took the dive, crowdfunded. A bunch of people watching now, I'm sure, yeah. donated to that crowdfund campaign to get me out the first time. And then uh, from then on, it's really been Honda and and the help of my good friends like the Hollises back here, Renee Hines, random people here and there that I've met along the way 10, 11, 12 years ago. Renee, actually, my crew chief, she saw me at my first autocross. Uh, and she saw that I came by myself, didn't have food, didn't have water, didn't have anything. She's like, <laughs> honey, come here, let, let's get Typical you, yeah, crosser, here's yeah. a peanut butter and jelly, have some water. And now she's my crew chief in pro racing. Oh, wow. So uh, just those little things here and there, and it's, it's pretty surreal. So have you, have you gotten to the point where, is there an end game in sight, or are you just still riding the wave of where this is going? Are you, are you, do, do you have a, a two-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan, or? It, do you, it, it, you just get, get through the weekend and <laughs> no, then figure something out. Honestly, I never thought I'd be doing any single thing that I've done <laughs> up to this point. So I can't even like imagine what the possibilities are. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm happy to take whatever opportunities come. Um, this weekend's my first race ever at Daytona. It's my first, gonna be my first full season in IMSA racing uh, a Honda Civic oh, TCR. Wow. 
um, with LA Honda World Motorsports or racing. So um, just like every little step that I've taken has been, I didn't expect that. So I definitely have little aspirations, you know, two, three, five, seven years down the line. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to take whatever happens because it's right. all fun. Awesome. So, and, and as luck would have it, you are going to be wearing an OMP suit this, this I am, this yeah. That, that our, our guests are going to be fitting to you Absolutely. here, which was just a total random occurrence. Absolutely, you guys, you guys yeah. sh showed up because you were in town and wanted to come, uh -huh. come, come to the show. Let's talk a little bit about, about safety from a driver's perspective. Y you've had to buy your own stuff and, and sure. you've, you've had stuff supplied to you. You've been, been on both sides of that, but... As a, as a driver, as the person that's got to do the work inside the car, what do you look for in, in safety gear? Somebody asked earlier about when I show up to a rent ride what do I check out? But what, what's important to you from being able to do your job most effectively? Sure. I mean, obviously, when I was starting, it was just whatever was cheapest. <laughs> right. And that's the worst way to approach safety equipment, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. But that, that's what I could afford when I started. Um, I've really come, you know, I, my butt hits a lot of seats in random events throughout a year. And a big thing for me is just um, the comfort. I feel like if the safety gear fits right, if it's comfortable, if I can fall asleep on grid in the car before I go out for the race, it's probably doing its job in a way that's that's uh, it's if it's comfortable when it's not doing its job it's still going to do its job really well when i actually need it and and, and that, that's such a theme we, we return to whenever we're doing a seat install on the show mm -hmm. is is comfort in a race car is not a luxury it is it is a necessity sure. because everything that distracts you from going fast is distracting you from going fast yeah. which is, which is yeah, your, yeah. Your, your predominant thing in there and if your comfort is uh, lean back like this, and yeah. you're like, okay, I'm comfortable, so I'm probably safe. Like, yeah. there's, you know, obviously there's some learning that goes along with it. But like I said, if I can fall asleep in the car and I have plenty of times before I go out, then I'm super comfortable in the seat, in the belts, uh, like you said, as tight as you can get them. Yeah. Uh, all of that, if it's doing its job where I am not even noticing it, I can, I can pass out in the seat, then, then it's probably doing its, its job. So have you had occasion to, to use your safety gear yet? Not a big one. Um, I hope that's wood or something. But uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. If I crash on Friday, no. It's not. It's not. It's got um, to do with me. I've had a, a fairly minor hit. A, a Lotus got spun out, and I T-boned it in my Civic a couple years ago. At, at um, which point, it probably just exploded in this, front of you. Oh yeah, the, right through it. Yeah. It was totaled. Yeah. My car had cosmetic damage only. We bolted a new bumper <laughs> on it. It was great. Poor guy. But that's the hardest hit I've ever had, and it was you know a, a pretty good just forward on head goes forward. Didn't really think of it at all as an impact. And my neck was sore for three days. Oh, wow. And I, I just have, you know, a new appreciation from that experience of that was a very minor incident of the grand scheme of what can happen on a racetrack. So that that was, like I said, when I started, safety equipment was not among the first things I thought about. It was how can I get it cheaply? How can I get it in the car to make sure I pass tech? And, and then, you know, having those little moments here and there where... The first time you get a little butt pucker through a corner and you think, oh, I almost didn't have that. It, little things like that add up to, like, I really make sure that my safety equipment is, is in its place now. So if you got somebody start, starting out, what, what's going to be your, your advice to them from, from a safety perspective? I mean, it, just to say don't skimp is, is, is easy, but sure. is, is, maybe, maybe I should ask you, is there, not, is there some place you can, you can skimp and get, get away with it, but is there anything that you absolutely do not want to compromise on Safety wise, I would say that not really any of it is worth compromising. Um, I think a lot of a lot of the name brands, the entry level brands that you see all the time, uh, if you're looking for budget stuff, all of that stuff works great. You know, you yeah. don't need to splurge on the four thousand dollar carbon fiber helmet to be safe. You can get away with that entry level helmet, and as long as it's comfortable in your head and it's uh, it's got the right safety ratings, it's going to be fine. So uh, if you're going with a known brand name and, and you're just getting yourself comfortable, you're going to be okay, I think. And stuff is really good today. We were talking about this with Patrick Gutt a couple weeks ago, that even a budget suit these days is, it's great. I have an eight-year-old suit, it's a piece of crap compared <laughs> to the, you know, it was a good suit eight yep. years ago. It, it feels like painter's overalls now compared to the new stuff. So mm -hmm. you're, if, you're, if you're starting out now, you are in a great time to do this. All right, we, uh, we're going to get Bob back on here, but before, before we go, what... How has your definition of what constitutes a successful weekend changed over the oh. years? Like, what is on on Monday? What, what, what's going to be success for you going into the first your your first IMSA race as a what as a, a full time IMSA driver? Uh, well, obviously, performance on track is number one. Yeah, uh, trying to do as best as we can. But I think uh, coming at it from a level where I didn't come from much and I had to kind of fight through all of the stuff and kind of make a name for myself. If I can do a good job in representing the people who are supporting me, making sure I'm there, Honda, um, LA Honda World Racing, all of these people um, making sure that 
they're getting their value out of me being there, out of the car, uh, is nine tenths of importance as the on track performance. Hey, he, he's figured this out. Yeah, you know, is, <laughs> is, is, is what he's those saying. are number one and two. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and let's, let's let's be real here. This this is a guy that that could. I mean, you you could have walked in here, kicked over a table. You know, taking a crap in the middle of the floor and laughing and be like, oh, Tom O'Gormer, that was awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. But you, you didn't. And come Solo Nationals, you're probably going to be standing over a hot grill cooking chicken I hope for so. everybody like you do. So, you know, thanks for keeping it real, man. Thanks for, thanks for having th me. It's, it's fun to watch you enjoying yourself doing doing this. And 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 not, I, I, I compare you, when I was young, one of the first pro racers I met that I thought like, okay, this guy's digging it, was Willie Ribs. Because he approached auto racing as a sport and when yeah. you when you succeed at a sport it's fun you should yeah. be having fun doing this and not one of those guys that just stands up there well we gave 110 percent they're changing hats on him and it was great all the whole team but can't screw that man have a good time doing this it's Thank fun you. to watch you enjoy yourself so th Thank you. thanks for stopping by uh and um you, if you come to daytona car yeah. 37 come yeah. say hi grab me anytime watch us on imsa.tv uh, noon on yeah. Friday. And take take some pizza with you. We have, we have oh, pizza, sure, that's what I there on yeah. the craft services table. Oh, get out of here! Get out of here! We got we got a show to get back to. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Tom O'Gorman, for stopping by and uh, and, and the Hollises. That was uh, that Thanks. was very cool. Yes, Carl says, do not underestimate the GRM bump. Um, yeah, and it uh, you can't can't really really over overstate how 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 fun this sport can can be when when you are enjoying yourself. All right, we'll get uh, get the um, mics switch back around, get, get Bob back up here. In the meantime, I will plug our golden ticket program again. Folks, uh, it is such an honor to have taken over this program this year because I get to take some lucky GRM experience ticket holders to the starter stand during the race. How cool is that? Uh, to a live pit stop during the Michelin Challenge race or during the Rolex 24 itself. How awesome is that? It's going to be so cool. Um, so if you, I, I am not, I'm supposed to tell everyone that I cannot take bribes for these. Um, I, I, I wish, I, I, I wish I could stick with that. But um, you know what? If you throw a plate of chicken wings in front of me, you might end up on on the starter stand. So David's got um, a single <laughs> dollar. I'm going to keep more. this and uh, and okay, just keep keep. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> we, got, we got pizza. You guys work there, and you know this. See, if 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 my coworkers think these are are, are that valuable, how valuable are they to you? <laughs> Even if you don't get a golden ticket experience this weekend, um, there's going to be lots of awesome stuff going on. Uh, we got our friends from uh, Nordlock are going to be there doing demos. Our friend Andrew Rains from uh, uh, Apex, Apex Pro, Pro is going to be giving <laughs> yeah. giving a talk ten o'clock Saturday morning. He's going to be giving a talk. In the uh, in, in the GRM experience area, all kinds of cool stuff going on. No, and I'm gonna keep this getting. It's fine. Oh, wait, this is empty. <laughs> Don't give me an empty pizza box. It's not gonna get you anything. I'm gonna put these back in my pants, so nobody gets anything. Uh, our friends from White Pony are gonna be there doing demos of their absorbent. Uh, Spec Clutch <coughs> is gonna be there. Krispy Kreme's gonna be giving donuts away. I'll go to go to our our Daytona page. You'll see everybody's gonna be there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We can't can't wait to see you there. Let's get Bob back in here. Welcome back. Uh, we th thanks for thanks for giving up the mic to Tomo sure. there for a while. He's uh, yeah, please. All right, that's yours. <laughs> no, it's 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 it belongs to all of us. Um, but I'm I'm gonna keep it keep it safe for now. Let's let's talk a little bit about about fire system because I actually yeah. screwed up in 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 uh, consulting with uh, my my friend Jesse here on installing the fire system. I, I said, oh yeah, rivets are a fine way to mount a fire system. Well, that's not true. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, yeah, it, as it turns no. out, so I'm, I'm glad you were here. But first off, take us through some of the options in fire systems. But I'm guessing the, the the big difference is is electric versus manual. Yeah, that that is the biggest difference. Uh, this is electronically fired system. Both of these are different capacities. You get different numbers of nozzles uh, with the systems. They're all FIA homologated. Okay. So they'll work or they're good for um, most any organization. Uh, the convenience of the electronic Firing is just a matter of running wires to a control box and some push buttons for the driver, which is on the control box, and an outboard one for the uh, corner worker, um, the outside of the car. Uh, the optional, uh, one of the other options is the uh, mechanical system. 
Now, the, uh, the prices of the systems are also reflected in the, uh, uh, the features that they have. Mechanical systems are the lower price systems. You can get a mechanical system for about $359. Um, the electronic systems just kind of go up from there. They're typically about maybe six, seven, eight hundred dollars They go up to $1,200 depending on the extinguishment that's used in them. Typically, you're going to have an AFFF, which is aqueous film forming foam. Okay. Um, that's a water-based solution, and it comes out as a foam uh, under pressure. The, uh, the other uh, type of extinguishment is a clean agent, which is called Novec, okay. which is the uh, environmentally friendly uh, replacement for Halon these days. And that um, is much more expensive. So as, as far as far as putting a fire out, is one of those <clears throat> better than than the other? Or is they different... extinguish the flames differently. Okay. The fires differently. The uh, the foam cools and smothers the flame, and the gas uh, deprives the flame of oxygen. Okay. So there are newer systems now. They're they're dual chamber systems. That's the latest thing that that came out, and the cars and the IMSA cars are using those now. Uh, they have both a triple F and a gas. And what they do is the AFFF system, because it works better for cooling and smothering, they'll put the uh, nozzles for that part of the system in the engine bay. Oh, wow. And in the driver's compartment, they'll use the gas. Um, so we're talking about the, the, this one, I think you recommended like six nozzles. If, if, we're, if we're putting multiple nozzles in something, how is, and we have a five pound system or a 10 pound system or a 15 pound system, whatever. Is there like a pounds per nozzle that we don't want to exceed or, or any, any kind of well, ca capacity for distributing that agent? The systems are rated for, um, say for instance, uh, a, this is a, I think a 1.3 liter system. Um, that has six nozzles. Okay. And the nozzles are sized differently. They're tested by the FIA to have a certain knockdown time for the flame. And depending on the pressure that's in the system and the size of the nozzle and the way it sprays, you can get away with, uh, or get away, or meet the requirement for uh, the fire knockdown time with a smaller system. Okay. And the gas is the same way with the gas. So if, if we're yeah. looking at, um, we have a question here about, are electrical systems uh, more prone to accidental discharge? Um, I would think that would be something that would be indicative of, of an improper well, installation, but it, 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 would, it, would, it would seem that if, if, if you do screw, screw something up on, on the install and ground something improperly or... Well, no, yeah. that doesn't happen. Okay. Usually, it, I would say 90% of the systems that we service that have been fired off that are electronic... You just flat out threw your credit card at me, didn't you, didn't you Dave? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. So 90% or 95% of the systems we, we, we service that have been fired electronically are due to people walking around the car and pushing buttons inside the car, oh. inside the cockpit, or the guys who are unloading them off the transporters. Okay. Red starter button? No. Oh. Well, oh. <laughs> and then we get a frantic call, you know, from the track, like, we got all this foam to clean up, and how are we going to do it, and how are we going to get the bottle to you and serviced, and... Yeah. So if, if, if there's an accidental discharge, it, it is it, generally yeah. an, an accident. It's not because of insulation. No. Yeah. So what about, is, is one better for a certain type of, type of application than the other? We put a manual system in our, in our Corvette because it's, it's an autocross and a track car and it come, goes in and out quite, quite a bit because we don't really need it on, on the autocross. Sure. So, so a manual system was, was an easy, e easy answer for that because we can just zip tie the lines in and, and take it in and out. Yeah. But if we're looking at something for a for a race car, it's going to stay in there. Electrical system going to be a, a better alternative? Is, 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 I, well, I guess what I'm getting at is, is, is one inherently better than the other, or are they different ways to solve the same problem? They're, they're different ways to solve the same problem, okay. yes. And, 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 you know, on the cost end of it, like I said, mechanical systems are less money. They're a little bit more difficult to install. Because you have to have proper if you, routing for the well, cable. Well, yeah, and, and you can't kink a cable. You have to be very careful with that. I've seen people pull the cables too hard, yank them out of their mounts. Um, my preference is the electronic systems. Oh, we have a, we have a, a YouTube question that Katie is... Uh, um, 
So, okay, uh, back to the, uh, uh, Craig, we'll get to your harness question in, in a minute we'll, we'll, when, we, when we go actually, actually to the car. Let me, let me talk to, uh, to uh, v, v Matsop there about potentially saving engine wiring equipment in the event of a fire. So you, you actually mentioned earlier that there was there, uh, different, different chemicals uh, are, are more suited to putting out, say, you know, the driver on fire versus the engine on fire. Um, is, is, is there, if you had to pick one over the other, and you were trying to preserve, say, the, the car. Is there is, is there a preferable way to go there? Well, the fire system's not going to pres or right. preserve the car or, or prevent the car from burning. Uh, the fire system is there to give the driver more time to get out. Okay, so if, if you need yeah. the fire system, chances are it, it, worrying about saving the car at that point is, is yeah, not, no, not really not, the right concern. No, no, okay, no, that's not, it's the driver <laughs> yeah. that's the concern. Yeah, um, and, and as far as electrical fires, you can spray an electrical fire as many times as you want, and if it's shorted and burning wires, it's not going out. Well, and that was, that was another question. It, Until the wire burns. Right, with, yeah. with, um, with electrical systems, is there, is there a danger of, of that connection between the actuator and the system breaking because the, the fire burned it? Or, uh, and is the same thing with, with the, the lines. I've seen aluminum lines, I've seen plastic lines. Is there, is there a, a type of line to, that you prefer or to avoid? Well, all the lines that carry the extinguishing are all aluminum. Okay. The ones that you see that are coated in plastic is called decabond tubing. Okay. So it's a vinyl coated aluminum tube. Okay, yeah. so it's actually aluminum inside that's just yeah. for some mm -hmm. abrasion resistance. and so Different let, style. Yeah, let, yeah, let's actually walk over and kind of take, yeah. a, take a look at, at, at our install here. Let's, uh, Chris, let's start in the, in the back here. Where the where the bottle is? Let me grab a light here. Mm -hmm. So our our mount is uh, you know temporarily riveted in um, for for uh, video purposes, but we'll we'll do through bolts on on that. And we actually haven't attached these cables yet because we were kind of waiting for the okay mm -hmm. for you. But for, from you is is does this look fairly right the way we've done it if we if we you know solid solid mounted these, these cables here is there anything weird going on there that you would you would see right off um well there's a little bit of a tight bend with this cable it's not too bad because it's a stranded cable i've seen some systems with uh, solid wire in the center um but it has to be secured in a number of places so it doesn't flex as you pull it you know same thing with this uh, cable here you know i would secure it there here so, and so, so keep, keep, keep as much flex out of the, the case as possible yeah, so that, yeah. that, that inner cable can mm -hmm. slide. Okay. So let's take a look at how we, well, well the mounting. Oh yeah. So we've, yeah, let's talk about that. we, we, we've riveted side. the mounts in, we're going to through bolt the mounts in. Yeah. Um, what else do we have going on there? Yeah. Those are pop rivets. Yeah. So there's really no surface area underneath to grab. I mean, you can, you can probably yank that a half a dozen times. It'll come off. So with the weight that that carries in a, uh, in a crash, G-force that'll pull right up. Yeah, there's there's a lot yeah. going to be a lot of mm -hmm. inertia here. So don't don't even as much as I love rivets, uh, maybe mm -hmm. not, not the place to use them. So let's look at our our actual spray nozzle pattern in there. So we've routed uh, the 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 line through there. We've got one spraying down at the foot box of the driver. We've got a couple going going under under the engine and I think we're going to end up having having one or two back by the by the by the fuel tank um, where else could we get some coverage in here with our with our fire system well preferably for the driver let me point that out yep Oop. the uh, it's preferable to have well the, the two nozzles that are going to be in the cockpit there's a single driver you aim them at the driver at your chest and the nozzles would be mounted you know roughly here we mount them on the uh, uh, the A pillar bar here and on the other side. So two in the cockpit and two in the engine bay. And if you want to use one or two at the fuel source, you can do that as well. But as you were telling me earlier, pu putting out a fuel fire is, is probably not going to really happen no. if, 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 if that's going on. You've got, you're, you're really much better to get away from a fuel fire than, than to try and yeah. extinguish it. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about a couple other things while sure. we're here. And actually, let me remind everybody, uh, coming up just a few minutes, we're going to drop this baby down onto the Intercomp scales in our What's It Way presented by Intercomp segment. Guess the weight of this VW Fox. Now that you're getting a little bit 
closer look at it, whoever comes closest without going over, you're going to win some fabulous prizes. Take a good guess. And uh, yeah. Uh, the have a melting fuse for auto fire in the oh, very, very good question. So the question was uh, about about automatic actuation through the use of of a heat sensitive fuse, of a melting fuse. It, what's what's what, what's our option? Well, there? it's it's not a fuse. Uh, it's a uh, it's a little uh, it's there's liquid in a little bulb, and OMP systems uh, do not have that feature. Uh, SPA okay. does. They have a firing head that's actually three way, so it's got the uh, temperature bulb. It's got uh, it can be done uh, can be set up for electronic firing and also mechanical firing. And they use AFFF and they have Novex systems as well. And is is there like the, a, a certain temperature that those those automatic firing bulbs yes. are looking for? They have that all figured out. Yeah, and it's it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's way hotter than you ever ever want to deal with, I'm sure. All right, so b before we before we uh, leave the car here, tell us about about the nets a little bit because that's that that's something that almost every racer is going to have to deal with. Uh, most most sanctioning bodies are now requiring center mounted nets mm -hmm. as well as as, as well as um, door nets. So what are some of our considerations as we're as we're installing that stuff um, to to keep it safe and to keep it from from being a, a uncomfortable burden, basically. Well, the center net, uh, you need a secured mounting point, and a lot of cars either have a dash bar which goes below the steering column. Um, this one is above the column. Most cars have them below the column. I guess it depends on configuration. You don't want this too high. This looks okay. Um, the top of the net should be roughly at your eye height for your helmet. Uh, should wrap around the back of the seat and attach to the rear or to the opposite uh, leg of the main hoop. So what? What is? So it cradles the seat as the well actual, as a driver. Is the purpose of the center net? Are you trying to contain your arms or your head or, or both? What? What is? You're trying to is, contain your your body. Okay, so basically, basically everything. Basically. There are some videos online that show a car hitting uh, laterally into a wall and. I believe it may have been an aluminum seat and the driver came out of the seat. Oh, wow. And then back in. So oh, this yeah. prevents that. Okay. Yeah. So how about, how about our door net? What are, we, what are we looking at there? Well, the window net, that's typically has got to cover a certain amount of the window opening. And this is not secure yet, but um, I mean, this is fine. You don't need the entire opening covered. And it just needs to get out of your way when you're out of the car. Yeah, and that was one thing we were talking about earlier. Is we were asking, you know, we might have been easier to mount it to the to mount both both ends to the the door bar here, might the top of the door bar. Yeah. But then when you're crawling in and out of the car, you're you're right. you're dragging a pretty sensitive yeah, the area is in the way on yeah. that, and that's 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 no good at all. So, it, if if you were pointing out stuff on on this car that we might want to look at before we go to go to the track, I know uh, you, the the belt routing was was something else. You would, yes. you would mention to us. Yeah, our our, our angle is good, but our, our crossover is yeah. not great. Yep. So <clears throat> tell us about that a little bit. Well, look at the back of the car here. So the uh, the shoulder harnesses are coming through the openings, and they're crisscrossing here. You don't need to crisscross them unless they're about 10 to 12 inches away from the seat. Then it's recommended to crisscross them, and so these two should actually be coming out. One out of each hole, and these harness collars should be on the outsides of the belts. So in a side impact, it prevents the belts from sliding, okay. and the seat, and the, the driver as well. So we had a good question come mm -hmm. in on, on YouTube, and this is this is something that that I always struggle with in some cars. I've been in, in cars like Spec Miatas sure. with halo seats that you could barely get it in and out of the car because so much of it was taken up. If you're putting together a safety package and, and you're, you're, you're sort of um, testing it as you put stuff in and, and working with it and getting comfortable, what should we look for? As, are there, is there like an exit time standard you want to try, try, try and get well, to? Well, yeah, most, or, most racing organizations do have okay. a time limit for you to target to get out of the car. I think most... I think uh, NASA, as I recall just offhand, is yeah. like 15 seconds. Okay. Some are less, 10 seconds. And if, if we're splitting the difference between, you, know, you, you, you never want to skimp on safety, but 
especially in, in, in the era of, of Halo seats, um, is, there, is there anything that we, we can look at elsewhere in this driver compartment that makes Halo seats easier to deal with, especially when you're exiting and entering a car with, with head and neck? Um, you know, sure. if, if you put a Halo <clears throat> seat in, do you immediately want to start looking at it? Well, if you, if you put it on a slider, and, you put yeah. it on a slider, certainly a quick release steering wheel. Yeah. I mean, that, that should be pretty much all race cars to help you get out. So, uh, we had a question about uh, three-point belts versus. Can you scroll back to that real quick and let's let's take a look at that because it was it was a good question, but it was long and I. Don't, uh, Craig oh yeah, yeah, Craig, uh, Craig, yeah. We we, we want to get get back to this um, with with the proliferation of of driver education and a HPD events. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of people that are putting just harness bars in their cars or installing harnesses in, in their cars with no rollover protection. Um, I, I would say straight off, that's probably a, a bad idea, just knowing what, what I know about it, but give us, give us the, the, the answer to that from a, from a well, safety guy perspective. What's, yeah. What well, are you doing wrong when, 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 when you do that? Well, <laughs> if you're going to do, if you're going to install safety equipment, you yeah. want to install it properly and you want to use the proper equipment. Yeah. Um, Early days of DE, and I've been with Porsche Club for many years, and we had harness bars. In fact, Stable Energies used to make harness bars that bolted to the B-pillars, and you would route your harnesses over the top and anchor them down below somewhere. Uh, I put them in the right position, but uh, certainly no rollover protection. Yeah. Yeah, you know? and, and I, th I think, I think what, what the, the argument basically being is if, if you're in a car with three-point belts, and you are in a roll, those belts are going to allow the driver to extend those belts. And you know, honestly, if you're rolling over, you got or, worse yeah, problems. But, yeah. but if you're locked in, in a position, you got you've got no place to go and no no protection, where you know, that that roof is just just going to come down and you'll, or come up at you once once it's on the sure. ground. Well, so that that's certainly a possibility. And yeah. I've seen roll cages collapse. Yeah. And drivers pinned in the seat too. So I, I think I think the takeaway yeah. message there is is. Pro proper harnesses, you, you want to pair with proper rollover protection if, if you can all do it. In an autocross yeah. situation, it's not, not quite, as, quite as, as mandatory, but certainly in a, in a track situation. Mm -hmm. Especially, man, cars are getting so fast oh, yeah. and so good. And every, yeah. you know, 140 miles an hour down the back straight at Sebring is not a big, there's, you know, there's Subaru wagons that are, that are, that are doing yeah. that. So you can it, get hurt pretty bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a big deal anymore. Okay, we got to start wrapping <clears throat> things up here pretty good, okay. but uh, we are um, officially taking guesses. Can you scroll to the bottom of my YouTube there to see if I missed anything on YouTube? Uh, we, we got the, the fuse thing, so uh, we, we, we dealt with the, the exit time. Yeah, I, I think uh, World Challenge is like 13 seconds for most of their classes, so. Anything, you know, if, if you can shoot for 10 or 11 seconds to, to GTFO and, and clear that car, that is, that, that is a pretty good standard to shoot for. Also, we're getting ready to drop this baby down onto the intercom scales. So here is your official, official request for guesses. Um, what is the weight of this here Champ Lemons AER prepared Volkswagen Fox? You've seen the inside. You've seen everything. Throw those guesses up there. Closest without going over is going to win some fabulous prizes from the, uh, the, the GRM prize stash. Bob, before we let you go, uh, what, what, did we, what did we miss? What did we absolutely forget to talk about tonight? What do you see people doing wrong constantly in, in roll bar padding? Oh, roll bar padding, yes. Yeah. It, it looks so simple. Yep. How could I possibly screw this up? Well, I said that about my <laughs> marriage many times, but. <laughs> well. Uh, people think they need to put it on both sides of the tubing, like fully around the tubing. They want to buy this half round. Oh, well, what about the rest of the tube? Well, your head's <laughs> not going to hit the yeah. outside of the tube. So basically, sticking it on the tube with tie wraps, the thickest part, towards wherever your, head. your head's yeah. going to hit. Um, most organizations want it certainly over the door openings, down the A-pillars, um, roll bar, top of the roll bar, and of course, the top rail so any place well. any place your head could hit obviously exactly also think about any place your hands or your feet could hit uh i, I think down down in, in that footwell you've got a nice vertical bar yeah in your footwell imagine imagine slamming your leg up uh, up against that thing you usually run them all the way down the yeah end. not a bad idea and front and, leg and yeah. these have come a long way since the days of glorified pool noodles basically. yeah well that was open cell foam okay. this is closed cell foam 
It's fire retardant. The uh, open cell foam, if you put a flame to it, it just drips away. Awesome. And you can't compress this either right. when you hit a tube. All right, so what are you guys doing this weekend? I know you got you got pretty pretty exciting weekend. Yeah, I know well, you're dealing with a lot of these 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 pros and getting them in. Sure, seats. sure. Well, we're here with uh, OMP America, and uh, we are here to service fire systems for all the IMSA teams. Um, Ferrari Challenge uses them. Um, the uh, Super Trofeo uh, with the Lambos um, and other club racers, but we're here for that. We're here with the whole OMP uh, crew from cool. uh, from Miami, and uh, these are most of their products. Awesome. Uh, so, how do we get in touch with with you guys? I know we've thrown the website up there. Yep. A couple times. Stableenergies.com. Okay. And, yep. And you guys. So, if if I'm just getting started, and I, I call you guys up and say, Hey, I'm building a Volkswagen Fox, or I'm building a, a Golf, or I'm building, a, you know, a Honda Civic. Mm -hmm. I need everything. You guys have people that know the questions yeah. I'm yeah. asking ahead. Yeah. Of time, we work basically. we work packages for for customers, uh, entry level, you know, every you know all all the different levels. Awesome. All, all right, up. let's yep. let's get this thing weighed. Jesse, do, do, do me a favor. Turn turn these two on over here. I will get the ones in the back. Don't forget to mention that it's closest without going over. Yes. Uh, so here is here is your last chance. To guess Where's the weight the of this here oh, VW Fox. Oh, Jesse, go ahead and pull the safety on, on that side of the lift too before I forget and we have to do it over again. <laughs> Closest, without going over, you are going to win some fabulous prizes from the GRM Prize Stash, courtesy of us and courtesy of our friends from Intercomp who make these amazing wireless scales. It's a little feature we call What's It Way, presented by Intercomp. Uh, I should probably take this time to mention how awesome these things are. They are built like tanks. They can go in a trailer. They can get b bashed around. They, they don't care what temperature it is. They don't care how rough you've treated them. Uh, you will not get these scales to screw up. I'm really, really impressed every time I, 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 I use these scales. Let us begin the ceremonial lowering of the VW Fox onto the scales, and we will see exactly what it weighs. It's so close. I can, I can feel how close it is. Right now it's almost t ready to touch down on these scales. There it is. We've made contact. Our segment is coming to a close. The weight is increasing as the arms move out from under the Volkswagen Fox and the weight has settled. It is. Let's see what some of our guesses coming in here are. What do we got? We got uh, Chris over here saying 2120. I'll tell you right off the bat, you're, you're high, Chris. I mean, your, your weight is high. You may or may not be. Um, I don't know where you are and what you're doing, but you might be just fine. Bruce, 2175, you're, you're really, really, really uh, um, over on that. Ron, 1750, you are a little bit low, my friend. Um, so we're, I, I saw one that was pretty close earlier. Here we go, folks. The actual weight of this Volkswagen Fox, 1,000. 945 pounds. I think I saw a 1946 in there somewhere, David. Or, or, or did somebody? Just about gone over. We have a 1941. We have a 1941. Yeah, Angela. Angela. Also, also a fabulous underrated movie. Um, so, Angela Carl Hasio, congratulations, 1941 pounds. You are the closest. Shoot me a uh, shoot me a DM tonight. We'll get your address. We'll send some stuff out to you, and you will be sitting pretty, young lady. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, oh, Scott, uh, wait. A late night. Did, did Scott guess 1945 after I announced 1945? I believe so. That says. The, see, yeah. technically, that's. I, you're, you're trying to you're trying to work the, uh, the the buffer in there, Scott. I respect the game, but it's not going to work th this week, my friend. Uh, folks, please, please, please come by and see us at Daytona. If you do not have a GRM Experience ticket, you can still come by, hang out in the tent, watch our big screen TVs, eat our free donuts as long as they last. Um, uh, the crispy eat our free Krispy Kreme. Donuts. It used to be so special when Krispy Kreme was just a Southern thing. People would come from Ohio and California. But, oh yeah, that's got free Krispy Kremes. Well, now Krispy Kreme is all over the country, uh, which you can tell because the diabetes rates have just gone boom. But they are fantastic. They are free. Come by, get some of those free Krisp Krispy Kremes. Hang out with us. Say hi. See our project cars. This is going to be there. The Corvette's going to be there. David's Porsche is going to be there. Uh, what else? The, 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 our Lotus Elan is going out there. 
Um, are you bringing your M3? Yeah, the, the, uh, David's M3 or, or his Porsche. Yeah, Katie's mini full of sweaters is, is going to be out there. It's our new project uh, sweater carrier. Uh, so please come out and, and hang out. Have a, it's going to be a great, great weekend. We cannot wait to see. Tomorrow's going to suck. Everything else after that is going to be fantastic. Tomorrow's going to be just ugly. Oh, till, 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 yeah, it's only, only the, 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 the heavens are only emptying onto us till about 10 a.m. Uh, thanks very much for watching tonight. Next week, we are back in the shop again. I totally forget what uh, we're doing next week, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Thanks very much to... Uh, I don't know if they text. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to tell you what we're doing next week, but if you text GRM Live to 31996, maybe uh, you will find out what we are doing in, in advance through a text message um, that is probably going to be just a picture of me going, how does this work again? So, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Don't worry. St stick with us. It, it's fun. It's like, it's like watching, uh, just, a, a, an insane baby being born right, right in front of you. That's it folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our friends at CRC industries. Check them out at crcindustries.com. Even better check them out at a retailer near you. Thanks to our friends at AutoBooks, AeroBooks out in Burbank, California, autobooks-aerobooks.com on the web. Thanks to the gang at Stable Energies for showing us everything we screwed up on this car, stableenergies.com. <laughs> Thanks to Tom O'Gorman, Andy Hollis, Ann Hollis for stopping by. It's great seeing them. Go by and see Tom this week. It was number 37 Honda, yeah. did you say? Yeah, number 37 yeah, yeah. Honda TCR car. What's on his Instagram? He is, yeah, he's a, he's a fine, fine young man. It is, it is an honor to know him, and it is so fun to watch him succeed in this world. That's it, folks. I'm JG Pastor Jack. We'll see you again next week, another edition of GRM Live. Thanks to Chris behind the camera. Thanks to Katie, our director, David over there working social media. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. See you at Daytona.